Welcome back to Braintree Today. I'm Martha Constantinides and you're watching BCAM TV. Now we'll be getting into our latest stories from the week. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky praised Germany this weekend and deemed them a true friend and reliable ally after German officials announced that they will supply 2.7 billion euros of additional military help for Ukraine and will build a weapons factory in the country. Zelensky visited Germany on Sunday for his first visit since the invasion began. The Ukrainian president met with Germany's Chancellor Olaf Scholz and President Frank Walter Steinmeier. Zelensky visited other countries such as Italy, France and the UK on Monday in an effort to rally Ukraine's allies. England's Prime Minister's office confirmed they would give Ukraine hundreds more air defense missiles along with long-range attack drones. According to the Massachusetts Department of Public Health, the Chang Farm in the western Massachusetts town of Watley is recalling mung bean sprouts due to listeria contamination. The products listed by the DPH are, are bean sprouts in a 10-pound bag, Nature's Wonder Premium bean sprouts in a 12-ounce bag, and Nature's Wonder Premium soybean sprouts in a 12-ounce bag. The agency noted that Nature's Wonder products are distributed to retail stores and wholesalers throughout Massachusetts, Connecticut, New York, and New Jersey. No illnesses have been reported as a result of the risk. The COVID-19 health emergency orders in Massachusetts and across the country ended on Thursday, May 11th. This brings a close to an unprecedented pandemic era that killed millions of people, prompted lockdowns, and crushed the economy. While experts say COVID is here to stay, the way we live with it continues to change. Residents in the state will start to see the mandatory mask mandate in healthcare settings disappear. Mass health coverage for some will be reviewed, and the vaccine mandate for executive branch employees will no longer take effect. For more information, visit mass.gov. With the mask mandate being lifted last week, the South Shore is also in a transitional period. South Shore Health lifted their universal mask mandate just one day after the national and state emergency came to an end. The healthcare facility said in a statement that masks will be optional at all of its facilities based on guidance and expertise of infection disease clinic infectious disease clinicians, national public health experts, and state officials. South Shore Health said other health protocols like proper hand hygiene and staying home when sick will still be in place as part of the standard response to managing diseases. The statement read, quote, Over the past three years, we have made immense progress in the fight against COVID-19, and the time has come to manage the dis this disease more closely to how we manage other endemic respiratory viruses. End quote. While the state isn't reporting daily COVID-19 health trends anymore, the Mass DPH is still monitoring and reporting health trends on a weekly basis. On May 11th, newly released metrics show that over 36,000 molecular tests were conducted and 979 new positive cases were reported in the last week. As of May 9th, 174 people are hospitalized in Massachusetts and 14 are in the ICU. 15 new deaths were also recorded in the last seven days. Thanks for watching Branchy Today. We'll be right back with more after the break. COVID-19 boosters are an important tool to keep you healthy. You may still get COVID after getting a booster, but it helps reduce your risk of severe illness, hospitalization, and death. Learn more at mass.gov slash COVID vaccine. Welcome back. Braintree and area communities could be getting help in the fight against substance abuse from a proposed amendment to the state budget. Senator Walter Timulty filed amendments last week to the fiscal 2024 Senate Ways and Means budget recommendations. This would support substance abuse prevention efforts, mental health services, and public safety improvements in the town of Braintree. Timulty is advocating for a budget item to be distributed equally among the seven substance abuse prevention coalitions in the Norfolk, Plymouth, and Bristol districts. If passed, $20,000 will be distributed locally to the Braintree Community Partnership on Substance Use. Timulty said in a statement, quote, 
Those who are impacted are our neighbors and our friends who have needed programs and a community of support. The opioid crisis continues to affect our communities in such a significant way." End quote. After a lengthy bargaining session on May 9th, the Town of Braintree and the union representing Braintree teachers and school staff have reached a tentative agreement on a new three-year contract. Under the terms of the agreement, teachers will receive raises of 9% over three years, retroactive to the start of this school year. Over the final two years of the contract, they will receive a market adjustment totaling 2%. As for lower paid paraprofessionals, they will see higher raises of 18% over three years for special education aides and 23% over the same period for instructional aides. Also included in the package is a preparation period during the school day for elementary teachers starting in the 2024-2025 school year and four weeks of paid parental leave for all employees. Union members are scheduled to vote on approval of the settlement next week with a school committee vote set for June 5th. Zom Living, the developer proposing a 395 apartment development at South Shore Plaza, says it's open, for further it's open to further modifying its proposal. The Braintree Planning Board last week voted 4 to 1 to continue its hearing on a proposed zoning change for the development to its August 8th meeting. Frank Marinelli, a lawyer for the developer, requested the continuance to give Zom and mall owner Simon Properties time to respond to the 11-page report from the town's planning staff. Marinelli said Zom could further modify the proposal if needed, but said the developer and its representatives have been unable to meet with town officials to discuss possible changes in the proposal. Opponents of the project argue that the proposed five-story buildings would loom over the one-story school and neighborhood of single-story houses. They also claim it would, be, it would set a bad precedent for future developments. Haley Leahy of South Weymouth says a treasured bench bought to honor the memory of her late father has gone missing at the Braintree Cemetery on Plain Street. Haley lost her father John last November, and in the weeks following her father's death, Leahy had a bench made to honor him. She placed it near her father's headstone at the Braintree Cemetery. The bench had been inscribed with the message, Until We Meet Again, and featured a picture of a daughter holding a father's hand. Haley is on a mission to get back a bench that offers her more than just a place to sit. She said, quote, this whole thing is just very devastating. I was very close with him. He was an amazing man. He was always looking to help someone, end quote. If anyone has information about the stolen bench, you're asked to call the Braintree Police Department at 781-794-8600. The Braintree Police Department is seeking the public's assistance in identifying two suspects who they believe were involved in car break-ins a week ago. Police received a number of reports of break-ins in the area of King Hill Road and Rome Drive on Sunday, May 7th. Police are trying to identify the suspects who were caught on ring doorbell surveillance, breaking into neighborhood vehicles. If anyone knows the suspects or has any information that could lead to their finding, please contact Branchy Police by calling 781-794-8600 or emailing tips at braintreema.gov. The town of Braintree will be holding a Braintree Pride Festival on Sunday, June 4th at Watson Park. Braintree Pride aims to elevate inclusivity, equity, and awareness in order to celebrate the thriving LGBTQIA community. The event will include a bounce house, fire trucks to explore, base painting, and music, as well as a food truck, ice cream truck, other vendors, and more. The festival on June 4th from noon to 4 p.m. is free to attend and family-friendly. For more information, you can visit BraintreePride.com. Thank you for watching Branchy Today on BCAM TV. We'll be right back with more stories in the area. Did you know your teenager's brain is more likely to get addicted to nicotine than yours? The tobacco and vaping industries do. They target teens with their products and try to cover up the fact that there's nicotine in them. Talk with your kids about the real dangers of vaping. Welcome back to Branchy Today. Now let's get right into more stories. 
Last week, federal prosecutors brought charges in connection with the armed robberies of U.S. Postal Service letter carriers in Boston last year. The Office of U.S. Attorney for Massachusetts, Rachel Rollins, said Maisha Lewis of Boston and Kenneth Demosthene of Stoughton were arrested last week and are accused of committing robberies in Mattapan and Hyde Park. Rollins' office said the robberies are part of an increase in crime using arrow keys, which can open multiple USPS mailboxes in an area, to steal mail. Both criminals face two counts of robbery of any person having lawful charge, control, or custody of any mail matter or of any money or other property of the United States. Two counts each of assaulting, resisting, or impeding certain officers or employees. The case is ongoing. Five Amtrak workers were taken to the hospital after two Amtrak track trucks collided near the MBTA's Reedville station. The incident happened at 4.30 a.m. early Friday morning when a track truck traveling eastbound collided with another vehicle which had stopped at a signal light when it was rear-ended. The Amtrak Infrastructure Maintenance Group was working with the trucks which are used to adjust the metal rails, wooden ties and stone beds so that they're straight and leveled. All the workers who were injured were in the vehicles at the time of the collision, and all five employees are receiving medical attention to treat non-life-threatening injuries. Members of the Transit Police Department's Accident Reconstruction Unit are currently investigating the incident. Brockton police said four people were stabbed last Friday in multiple incidents that occurred right outside the Brockton High School, and one of which occurred at a nearby hospital. The stabbings outside the high school occurred after school was released for the day. Police reported that two juveniles were stabbed near the softball field and were taken to the hospital for treatment of non-life-threatening injuries. A third person later checked himself into the hospital. Later on, police responded to a reported assault and battery at Good Samaritan, Medi Good Samaritan Medical Center, the same hospital where the victims were taken. Police said a fourth stabbing occurred at the hospital involving the person police said was a suspect in the high school altercation. Five people are now facing charges, including one who was responsible for the high school incident. Brockton Police spokesperson Darren Duarte said, quote, Investigators believe both issues may be related. It remains an active investigation, end quote. Some events are coming up in Quincy as a flag-raising ceremony and festival will open Pride Month in the city this year. The United First Parish Church in Quincy Center will hold a flag-raising ceremony at 6 p.m. on Thursday, June 1st. Special Events Coordinator for the City, John McDonald, said the flag raising was received warmly last year and the committee has worked with local companies to hang the flag. Then on Sunday, June 4th, the, the 6th annual Q Pride Day Festival will be held from noon until 5 p.m. in Kilroy Square. The festival will include food trucks, games for kids, vendors, and performances from special guests like drag performer Randy Roberts. For more information, visit quincypride.com. Thanks for watching Braintree today. We'll be right back with more in entertainment. Every home needs a basic emergency supply kit. It should meet the unique needs of the people who live there. Your kit doesn't have to cost a lot. You probably already have many of these supplies, and you can get others at a discount store. Visit mass.gov slash be prepared. Welcome back to Branchy Today. This week in entertainment, we have a few movie recommendations for you to watch. First up in entertainment, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 focuses on Peter Quill, who must rally his team to defend the universe and protect one of their own. If the mission is unsuccessful, it could possibly lead to the end of the Guardians as we know them. The film was just released and already is a box office hit, bringing in $283 million globally. You can watch Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 now only in theaters. Next up in entertainment, the Super Mario Brothers movie follows Brooklyn Plumbers Mario, voiced by Chris Pratt, and brother Luigi, voiced by Charlie Day, who are transported into a magical new world after falling down a mysterious pipe. The brothers are separated, leaving Mario to embark on an epic quest to find Luigi with the assistance of Mushroom Kingdom resident Toad, voiced by Keegan-Michael Key, and Princess Peach, voiced by Anya Taylor-Joy. 
Together, they have to face the all-powerful Bowser and stop his plans from conquering the world. You can watch the Super Mario Brothers movie in theaters now. Finally in entertainment, the highly anticipated live-action remake of Disney's classic The Little Mermaid retells the story of a young mermaid who dreams of experiencing the world beyond the water and to be with the handsome prince she rescued from a shipwreck. Ariel makes a deal with a sea witch to trade her voice for human legs, though her dream come true turns into a nightmare when the, scre when the scheming witch reveals her true intentions. The Little Mermaid was released in theaters on May 26th. That'll do it for news today. I'm Martha Constantinides, and thank you for watching Braintree Today on BCAM TV. Stay safe, and we'll see you next time.